How can we give yesterday a tomorrow? I'm coming from Belgium. I'm a teacher trainer in a teacher training college. And um, my main subject is religious studies. But since many years, we have a course, an optional course, um, Remembrance Education. It's unique in Flanders, in the west part of Belgium, but still unique in Belgium. And I will tell you more about it. I will start with two pictures, very recently. This is a picture that I found in Brussels, nearby La Bouche, and it's in French. C'est mathématique et historique. It's math and it's history. And you see symbols, you see words. Hain, hate, racism, integrate. Malheur means something bad, deaf, and zero. And then you see another. Tolerance, culture, liberty, bonheur, happiness, life eternity. This is one. And I found it so important because it's about two kinds of languages. The mathematics, the first language, and the second language. The language of poetry. The language of what we are common with. And that's another one I found nearby La Bourge. It's made the 22nd of March. And you see like a symbol, like a cardiogram, yeah? But some weeks later, I saw this. It was a little bit damaged, like this. Yeah? And we talk about hate, and we talk about all other kinds of things. And for me, this was also a kind of symbol. What happens after the attacks in Brussels, that people do this with this kind of symbols? Why am I standing here? It starts a long time ago in 1972, when I went with my parents to Ghent, and it was a very famous bakery, Bloch. And this man was always with us, and when we had the hot chocolate, he talked about his life. He talked, when I was 11, 12 years, about Israel. He talked about Holocaust. And as a little child, I heard these words. And I was a collector of stamps. And he gave me stamps about Israel. And still these stamps are for me so important because they refer to something that was for me important as a young, as a young child. And in 86, I was a teacher in a, in a secondary school. And we went to Poland for humanitarian transport. That was the first time. And I went with my friend and two others. And we went to, to Poland and we want to see Auschwitz. And we asked people, Auschwitz. And Nobody reacted on this. It was very strange, because Auschwitz was not in the mind. It was a Zwechim. So for us, it was something special too. When we walked there, we want to have some information. And I remember still that I bought slides, 20 slides about Auschwitz, that I found one book and some posters. And that was it. In 94, I became a lecturer at the university college. And we went with students of science to Poland because we had a kind of um, agreement. That was the first time that I could bring students to that space. And in 2009, we had an exchange with uh, colleagues of the Netherlands, Belgium, and people from Kiev. And then I heard for the first time Babi Yar. I never heard about Babi Yar. I never heard about the Holocaust by bullets. And this was for us a very strong moment. And in 2010, we start with an optional course. And we had three hours a week, 12 weeks long. We can work with students about the Holocaust. And we make it in a way that we are doing about mapping, timing, dating, and facing. Mapping, that means we look to maps. We look to the time. We make timelines, yeah? Do kind of datings. Datings means we will look for people who come together with us, yeah? and facing. We want to give what happens in the past a face. And uh, in 2011, we had the possibility with the Flemish government to have an exchange with students of Lublin. And we went for the first time to Majdanek. And this was the picture that 
touched me so much when I was in the Netherlands with my colleagues that we have seen this. I never heard about the Holocaust by bullets. And this was one of the, you can say, installations. Yeah? That all these bullets has to do with something that is a tragedy. You see the date that they found them, you see the number. Yeah. It's not only mathematics. It's not only mathematics. How do you remember? We're using stories. You just thought, uh, Rabbi, about that story, that strong story. Yeah? This personal account. Yeah. Using historical sources, that's also important. You link it with the archives. You say, 301, I found it. We do the same. You have the stories, but you have also the sources. What is necessary? Using art, literature, music, technology. I'll show you. But also looking for local links. We try to find the local links in Flanders. We have a, a strong community in Antwerp, or the Jewish community. But we found in West Flanders, nearby the coast, some families. And strange, in Ostende, we found the name. He was a um, uh, Sif, Schiff, like you called, and he was Robert. But his original name was Leibaber, and he was Robert. He was a hairdresser, a very famous man, but he never thought about his, his past. But we find his records in Mechelen, in the Casino de Dossin, and we start with the students to reconstruct his story. And we find that he has a daughter, and we went to the daughter with all our documents, and she was so proud that somebody did something for her family. And uh, we went to, to Helm, to Poland, and we found the place where he was born. And that house is still there. And we make there a kind of ritual, yeah? because there was so much to tell to the people around. So using rituals is for us important. Which kinds of rituals can we use from our system? So this is a scheme that we always have in mind when we do remembrance education. It has to do with the past, knowing the past, working in the present, and building the future. So it has to do with preserving, changing, looking for strategies, but most important, looking for values. And to know, it has to do with thinking, with doing, and with feeling. It's uh, from 96, but uh, still working. And we developed an own model. We called it the target model, to remember people. And we use the colors. And our students and the course know that quite well. And they had to do it like this. So if they do investigations, if they work with the archives, there is always yellow. You have to situate the person in time and space. Red, there must be relationships, activities. Yeah? You look to the archives. Yeah? And you look also to the black element. That has to do with suffering. Which kind of suffering was it? And white is a short life embedded in the Great War. We say Great War, or what we say, the Second War. But it's always that. It's a personal story, and you bring it in a uh, uh, global uh, size. Not only for people, but also for places, the same. There is that uh, famous quote from uh, Pierre Nora, le lieu de mémoire, yeah? the places. And we call it also recontextualization. Recontextualization. You have the text, you have the context, but nowadays we had also do recontextualize it. But not as easy. You need the archives, you need all this material. So red is always the emotions. And what we are looking for is what we call intergenerational space, that we can come together with several generations, children, grandchildren, parents, grandparents, like this. But also, and that's one of our vocations, calls, if we are going to Auschwitz-Birkenau, if we go to other places, we see a lot of people. But there is no space, there is no time of reflection. And sometimes my students say, is it not possible to talk with somebody? You have the guides. But we need sometimes the people who are there. And when we are in May, there is this kind of movements who coming of the livings to, to, from several places in the world. And what we want is this kind of contact, this kind of links, the narratives, the photos, and so on. The keys to understand. You tell something about stories. 
we say story and history. But there is something like his story and her story. The story of a man, the story of a woman, the story of a child, but also trans history. That is the future. What are you doing with the story of the past for the future? And we listen in stereo. That means we listen to several kinds of. We listen to what happens in the past and nowadays. We listen to several communities. We have this language, first and second language. And then we had the three steps. You see something, you judge, and then you act. But first you have to see. You have to use your senses. Change and exchange and so on. Time, space, and people, that's important. And if you talk about memorials, there are always objects. And we see when we go to a memorial, kind of object, it can be candles. But behind the candle is a word. It's maybe a prayer, yeah? And behind that is maybe a gesture. And sometimes we have to bring them together. If we want to have very good symbols, you need objects, words, and gestures, yeah? Text and context, you have a text, Bring it in the context. It's learning about, that's an education, learning from, but also learning within. Yeah? And what is important? The art of questioning. And that's what I like so much in the Jewish tradition, the questioning. Not the answers, but the questioning. Yeah? Okay, I go a little bit further to show you this. This is what we make also, based on what we have seen in Auschwitz and Birkenau and other places, and we call that soul management. You have a crisis. This morning somebody talked about a crisis. You have a crisis, yeah? But if you have a crisis, you have to use your senses, your ears, your eyes, yeah? And then you pronounce it in sentence. And if you pronounce it in sentence, maybe you find some stories. And if you have the stories, maybe you have then a symbol. And maybe then you can go out. We call it from crisis to kairos. Kairos is to have a new chance, to do something new. Otherwise, you're always sitting in that crisis. But by doing this, and we do that in primary school, we do that in secondary school, we do that on our trips. Listen. Look. Yeah? All these kind of things, and this gives the possibility. Last thing is our six dimensions of remembrance education. It starts always with experiences. I just thought, Rabbi, was a contrast experience of your father. Yeah? This is something that makes him a little bit angry. Yeah? That's important. The suffering, the liberation, the health, the diaries, the social dimension, the affective dimension, a technical dimension, you can read it. Yeah? If we talk about Holocaust education, it has to do with citizenship and cognitive dimension, research, publication, conference. I am from, okay, the teacher training, very practice. But I need the research of all these people. Yeah? I'm so happy to be here to have this kind of uh, uh, thoughts. But last but not least, ritual dimension. I will show you now some pictures. These are my students. We worked in the parliament, the Belgian parliament. We do there a kind of performance for young people. We had this man, Simon Gronowski, a fantastic man, who taught his story as a child of 11 years old who could escape from one of the deportation trains. Yeah? And he's so nice, he's so, so ring man. Yeah? Um, and then we use art. Felix Nosebaum. He was born in Osnabrück. He was in Ostende. He was in Brussels. He was deported with the last train. Yeah? And this painting is for us so important. We look to that. It's, 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 it's so symbolic what is in this painting what he showed, yeah? And then this is the painting maybe you have seen at uh, places too. Nosebone, yeah? He knew already what happens with him, yeah? And uh, it's symbolic, yeah? So this is what we do. The train nearby the Caserne de Dossin, it's in Mechelen where the deportation starts. And then we wait this with the blackboard. We always wait with blackboards. We have this train and then we do this kind of talks with the students the result of it. This is the new museum of Holocaust and human rights in Mechelen, nearby Brussels. Yeah? And also we do decoding the, the building because this building is very special. There are no windows. The windows are not no longer there, but there are 24,000 bricks in the windows 
because 24,000 people were deported to Auschwitz. And if you look to the gate, to this gate, it's also the door of the wagon. So it's so symbolic. And that has three, three sorry, it has two, three levels, three floors. The first floor is about mass. The second floor is about fear. The third floor is about death. And the fourth floor, you have windows. You see the city. If we go there with our students on the fourth floor, they had to announce something to the city. I go a little bit further and then, okay, these are my students, this is the class. Let me do something like that. And I want to show you some for the end. We went to Auschwitz Birkenau this year. And afterwards we make a mapping. We were sitting together, not in Auschwitz, it was in Zakopane, in the Tatar Mountains. Yeah? And we make a mapping. So I make with all papers the grand map of, of Auschwitz Birkenau. And my students could put posties on all the places about questions, about uh, impressions and so on. And afterwards they read it. And then they received paper, envelopes, and they could write a letter to somebody in Belgium. It could be a family member, it could be a friend. It was like this. And then we make with our smartphones a mosaic. So I asked them, take one picture of all your pictures you make in Auschwitz Birkenau, and we put them together around the candle. And this was the result. Uh, this kind of mosaic. And these were the letters they sent to their family. I think this is important, that it's not only 20 students going to Auschwitz Birkenau, but it's a whole circle, a global circle, and a lot of people. They have Facebook, they put pictures of Facebook, and there was also talks about that. It's about stories, it's about memories, it's about life. Thank you very much.